Hey YouTube land, just Jax here. Uh, another video for you once again. Um, <laughs> today um, I would like to talk to you about binding. It is, um, first off, it is the process in which someone who is female to male and possibly non-binary, it's the process that they do to make their feminine chest look smaller if not some people try to go as flat as possible um i have learned um in my almost 20 years of binding actually 20 years of binding not consistently every day but 20 years of binding that going as flat as possible is not possible for one whenever you have breast tissue and not the com correct look depending upon your body um, even with top surgery and such, some people are like, oh my god, I'm not flat enough, I'm not flat enough. Biologically born male individuals have breast tissue as well, and those that work out have a curved upper body pectoral muscles. So being completely flat is not, an, not um, a safe goal, it's not where you should try to see yourself um very very skinny individuals this possibly could be um and if you do it is possible to be that skinny and still have a chest um i was one of those people <laughs> um before i gained weight um so but even with my body type trying to get completely flat wouldn't have worked for me so that's my first thing that i want to talk about is do's and don'ts uh, so it's kind of a binding one-on-one if you want to put it that way so the first thing is to have realistic expectations um like i said binders and binding correctly and binding incorrectly will not possibly get you all the way flat and that's okay there's a certain aesthetic that you want to try to be and that's male and ma males have tissue there too they have muscles there as well um gentlemen that tend that gain weight they will have a bigger area there as well and it's a sore discussion for some of them as well so um you don't want to try to your goal should not be to be completely flat the next thing i want to talk about is um along the do's and don'ts line and that is what to not do when it comes to binding um, like I said, I started binding 20 years ago, didn't know how to do it, didn't know what to do to do it. And what I did at first was get, um, I was around 110 pounds at the most around in those days. And I still had a chest that was about a size C. So what we did at the time was get me extra small sports bras that didn't have a lot of give. And it was not the safest way to do it, but it was safer than other ways that there are to do it. Um, there are drag kings that still promote using duct tape. I have done it, um, especially when I gained weight and my chest got bigger. I have scars from it. <laughs> it is not a safe way at all. Duct tape has no give. At least with a sports bra, it's meant to be worn. It's meant to get to... Go with, move with your body, um, but the underband would would singe up my ribs and I could not breathe in it. Um, some people double sports bra. That's not a good way to do it either. That's even more constricting. Binders do constrict. Binders are safer. They do constrict, but they're meant to still move with you. Um, duct tape is not. Duct tape is for holding insane things to get people use them to hold their cars together i've been one of those people duct tape is never a safe measure to use um i know like i said plenty of drag kings that do it i have done it um i have scars from it um i have messed up my breathing from it um i've had to be emergency emergency cut it cutting out of it behind um backstage at a drag show and also with the next thing I'm going to say, ace bandages. People think that since they kind of spring a little bit, that those are safe to use. I've done that as well with a mix of duct tape. 
and that's not safe either. Um, duct tape, oh, sorry, ace bandages are meant to hold possibly broken bones together until they can get casted. They're meant to keep muscles immobile until they can get properly seen or properly healed. So imagine wrapping that around your chest and whenever we do it, we don't just wrap it around our chest, we pull it as tight as we can so then whatever give it has is gone. Once again, I've had to be cut out of it backstage because I could not breathe. I've messed up my ribs, I've messed up my breathing. Um, from a case of pneumonia, I have also been diagnosed with pleurisy, so constricting my breathing when I'm also, uh, I forget the technical term, but it's when I'm active, I'm considered an asthmatic, <laughs> which I know seems weird, but um, asthmatics can just be sitting still and have an asthma attack. Mine is from excessive, um, not excessive energy, but excessive activity. I can become an asthmatic, so constricting your ribs so you cannot move your lungs, it is not safe. And I know those situations might just be like, oh, I was doing a drag show, like I'm just going around the house, I mean, I'm just going around town shopping. That No, that's not, it's still not okay. You can still really hurt yourself, really do damage, um, do damage to the breast tissue that could possibly change results of a top surgery if that is your goal. Um, I do know guys that are now using KT tape. Any one of those that I have seen are extremely smaller chested. Um, and they do that where um, what they do is they take about around the nipple and pull it to the side. And so then um, they can be seen as more masculine and have a flatter chest. Um, and I don't know about this method. I have no personal experience with it. So I cannot say good or bad. So I will not say good or bad. I will not promote it though. I will say that there are people that are using it. Um, I know there's a fitness instructor that I know who has a very masculine chest but still has breast tissue and it's very small breast tissue and he uses it um, because he works in bars and stuff so he wants to be topless. And among other things, just being out and stuff. Um, I would assume that in his case, because of a smaller chest, that it works for him, but I don't know how he personally feels. I don't know how it makes him feel, how the KT, tape, KT tape reacts. Um, I know it's more for muscles than it is for like, say what ACE bandages are used for. So there is that. Um, other than that, those are the main things that I know. Sports bras, I'm buying smaller sports bras. Going down one size until you can get a binder, I don't see a huge problem with that. Um, it won't get you as flat as you think it will, but it is better than anything once it gets stretched out than getting a new one. That, that's not the worst case scenario as opposed to duct tape and ace bandages. Please never do those. Please. I have done enough damage to my own self to know they are not safe. If you look up safe binding methods, everyone else preaches the exact same thing. No. <laughs> I know it sucks saving up for a binder. There are giveaways all the time. Um, when I get into a better position, I will be doing giveaways for them. If I ever get top surgery, surgery, I will be giving away my old ones. So there's always someone. They're about $35. Um, if you have money, if you have income, cut back a few things. You can get one a little bit quicker than, than, than you think. Say about five bucks at a time in a couple months you would have one so i understand not being there i only have two they were both given to me all three binders actually the one i outgrew and the other two that i have were given to me so i do understand sitting down spending your own money to get one seems like a big hurdle and there's other things that come up um so i do i get it i do understand so the next thing i'm going to talk about is um the types of binders and um possibly where to get them the first binder that I ever had, someone gave it to me and it came from China, so there wasn't a specific name or anything, and it was made out of the same material as other binders. So this is the bottom of one of my binders. So it was made out of this, like I said, stretchy material, and it had a zipper in the middle. And it was, a, it was what we call a half binder, so it was just from the top up and it had like tank straps on it. So I would lay down and I would pull my 
chest to the sides, zip it up, and then rearrange them to be in a more, look like I had pecs um, afterwards. And that was my um, drag binder for a long time. And um, I didn't use it going out per se as much. Um, since I was perceived as female, I, I kind of just went with it, even though it was internally messed with me, I just went with it. So I didn't really, I did wear it out sometimes, but not a lot. Um, and then after I gained weight, I could not wear it when I wanted it to. So my chest was even bigger. And then I was, I got booked in a show and I hadn't been in a show for a while. And I tried and tried and tried to get that thing on. I busted the zipper. <laughs> so I called a friend of mine, um, who's also trans. I called him. I was like, can I please, do you have a spare binder by any chance? I was like, I hate it. I was like, this might make, mean you can't go to the show. Like, I hate to ask. He's like, I have a spare that I don't use that more that much anymore. He says it's kind of stretched out. He's like, I think it'll work for you because I think we're the same size. So this is the binder that he gave me and he told me I could keep it. So I do believe, um, he did not tell me, but considering the other binder that I have where I know it came from, I'm, I'm it's the same one. It's a GC2B. Everyone gets that wrong. I wish they had a better name for the company. I will have a link <laughs> to the page. Um, this is what is called a full binder. So this goes my whole torso. And on the inside, in the chest area, is an extra piece of whatever material this is. And I've said before that I tend to pop out of this one and I have found out it is because the underseam on this side has been pulled and I have pulled that myself from trying to get it off when I get it when I pull it off um, that's when that happened um, so that's why the left side or the right side sorry the right side tends to pop out some but it's just it's fairly thin it's I really I really compare it to Under Armour material um, those moisture wick shirts Under Armour shirts um, Nike running shirts and stuff it's pretty much the same thing it's it's you can almost see through it. Um, it is extremely well sewn together. So the fact that this one seam did pop out is kind of a bummer because it's the one spot that's not double double sewn, which actually you'd think it would be, but it's surged underneath to make it, and then it just has one one seam or one line of stitching. Kind of disappointing, but now that I know what's wrong with it. I think we can fix it. This one has become, depending on, like I said, I was working in a fast food restaurant. I no longer work there. This became my work binder once I got a second binder. So it was a, it's it's looser now. So I can still move in it. I can still breathe in it well. Um, if I still have a shipment shift at my other job, I would wear this one as opposed to wearing this one. Um, if I'm just on sales floor or something like that, I will be wearing this one to work. Um, if I get some of the other jobs that I've applied for, I would be wearing possibly this one. Um, if I'm going to be outside and stuff, I wear the, like if I'm going to go into a Cardinals game or Six Flags, I will wear this one. Um, it's a very quick drying material. Actually, the double seam in the back is coming out too. I didn't notice that. And that's a, the around the binding in the back. Um, I've had this binder for two years now. I don't know how long he had it before he gave it to me. So considering just my two years of use and the seam just coming out and done since I've had it, like I said, for them being $35, all the other seams are really well made. There's not any other problems with it. Like I said, you can kind of see through it. Um, this is now, there's some controversy over this. This is now my workout binder. Um, because I tend to pop out of it, um, I'm still careful about what shirts I wear to the to the um, gym. The first time I did it, I wore a medium shirt that was too small for this while I was working out. I was highly uncomfortable. I didn't do any arm exercises. I made that leg day. Um, and um, th my gym allows me to use the handicap restroom because I am handicapped, but they, it's storage. <laughs> so the public can't use it. So they... <laughs> Toby just fell off the table. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> so um since this is so stretched out so this is so worn out i do use it to exercise now because i i can breathe in it i can breathe in it 
I can breathe in it. Um, but you become a sweaty mess in a binder just from wearing it. So if you haven't worn one yet, summers suck. Just the summer is the reason I want top surgery. I hate putting one on to just go walk the dog. So I am fairly large chested. So to go walk the dog like this, my, one of my neighbors that I don't really know well in the building behind us wished me a happy Mother's Day. So yeah, there's that. So top surgery is necessary. This helps, but this is not a fix. This is just a little bit of it. And my cat is now rubbing against the light. So <laughs> there we go. Do you want to say hi? No, you're mad at me because I'm on your table. I'm on this table. Okay, so this is now my stretched out, worn out work slash workout binder. I would never, ever work out in my new binder. My new binder, I still have to have help getting on and off. Especially if I just took a shower, I need help getting it on. And I think there's only been two times since I've started wearing this one in the last month that I have been able to take it off by myself. They are that tight and they need to be. So you will still have trouble breathing. It is very, all right then. It is very important <laughs> that you stretch, that you breathe, that you keep moving. Um, like I said, every couple of hours, stretch and move and try not to wear it for a long period of time. Um, I don't wear this one. Um, I went to, when we went to Maryland, I wore this in the car. So I hate getting, I hate being in the car in just t-shirts and you saw my chest getting out and then getting mammed and everything. So I did wear this while we were traveling. Take it, take it. In my bed. What? Ah, you're feisty. And then whenever we stopped for the funeral and different events and such, I wore this one. So um, even in this one now, there's some pictures of me where I still look. Yeah, so I don't completely like this one as much, but it still works and it does help and it makes me feel better in the gym, which is a, has, been, has been a big thing. Um, and um, it will be my Six Flags and Cardinal Games and stuff like that. Um, because riding in the car for two and a half hours just to get to St. Louis in this, then going to an event, let alone being out in the sun and hot and stuff, I would not want to be in this one at all. It is comfortable. Getting it on and off does suck, but it is comfortable. Once you get it to where you're in the right spot, it's not as hard to breathe as you think it would be, but it does take getting used to if you've never worn a binder. And so this also, sorry, is a nude tank. It has a V-neck. I think this one does too. This, okay, this one is a little bit of a scoop neck. So I don't know if that, I don't know if that's a something you can pick between. That's about the same. I guess it is the same neck, just it's stretched out. So it's a V neck. Um, there's already it was brand new, and there's already one thread that's out. But it's a thread. It's not a seam. But as a, as you can see, still, they do the same thing now. They still do the double and the underneath is still the extra material it's an extra layer of material but as you can see this one i cannot pull that this all moves this all moves this is the back this is the bottom this all moves with you the shoulders move with you but the part that goes in front of your chest does not move and let's see the chest on the old one same thing that is what does not move and that's what constricts and makes it hard to take a breath like complete breath like you get you get used to shallow breathing so that's why how long you should wear this is up for debate some people say five hours some people say eight I know people that wear them for 12 I've done that before on some certain days and I pay for it the next day I'm having trouble breathing the next day so once again this is a full binder they make a half binder, which just stops, it goes a little bit below the top, so your belly is fine. Since I have a little bit of a belly, I prefer this. Um, the half tank did kind of bother me at times. Um, they do ride into my elbows, 
um, not my elbows, my armpits, and that's where my scarring is from them. Um, the new one is cut into me. The old one is cut into me. It's about the same place where the duct tape is cut into me. I have just like little, what looks like I cut myself lines. Um, so that's a really annoying to be bloody and sore and raw in those areas. Um, that area is irritated right now, just from wearing this this morning to the gym. So that area is kind of always annoying. Um, and the ointment. I keep that around and put it on there and lotion on the areas so it's not dry so it doesn't get rubbed around. Um, as for other things about binding, there are more than one company that you can get them from. Like I said, they vary between $25 and $35. Um, if it's more than that, don't get one. <laughs> um, I can't see of a hugely better, more scientific way to do what you need to do. Um, just to let you know what you need to do to put one on is some people wear a tank underneath. I personally do not because I feel like that gives it a way to move. Some people wear a sports bra underneath. Once again, I feel like the sports bra gets in the way and keeps it from doing what it's doing. That's my opinion. So I personally, um, when I get ready, I um, like say for my job interview, took a shower, got completely dried off, completely dried off as best as you can. Um, then I put on my underwear and my pants and my socks and my shoes first. It's a big thing to do first. And then put on your binder because once you have your binder on, even put on your socks and shoes can be an ordeal for some people. So I do all that first, then I put on my binder. And so you're gonna put it on over your head. It's gonna be, depending on how big your chest is, it, the part of it's gonna get stuck here. So you wanna pull down the back as best as you can pull down the front as best as you can then you lift and pull out and pull over and you lift and pull up and pull over and then you're gonna look at your profile before you put any clothes on and you don't want it to be some people try to pull them down as far as they can but to me with how large my chest is that just makes a band right here so part of what I do is I pull them up and out and I kind of make what would look Someone somewhat like that. So it looks like instead of just being round, I end up looking like I would have picked as best I can with what I have. So it's not a foolproof system. I still get, sometimes get mammed, especially before my voice changed. I still get mammed in it now. Um, less so on the road trip, but still it happens. So it's not gonna be like, hey, now I'm a dude. Yes, you are, but the world is still possibly going to see you differently than you see yourself, unfortunately. Wish that wasn't the case, but it happens. Um, but it does make me feel immensely better as soon as I have it on and I see myself. Like, I, I'm one step closer to where I know I can be and I should be. So, I do recommend binding. I do know it's a part of being trans. It's a part of being your true self. And I have no problem with people wanting to do it and needing to do it. I will never condemn someone for doing it, but I will educate on how to do it properly. Another thing that is um, to each his own, some people do not wash and do not dry their binders. That drives me insane. I cannot do it every day that I wear my binders because we have to pay for laundry. So we cannot afford a load of laundry every day. Um, because it is cheaper for us to kind of stack the dryer in a way as to do four loads of laundry so where we can kind of spin off the other one and only put a couple extra quarters in versus a whole nother dollar fifty for the dryer. So this gets Febrezed a lot. This one gets Febrezed too, but I don't wear it as much. But this one gets Febrezed every day till I can wash it. Um, it smells like sweat and Febreze. Yeah. <laughs> Pull the chasey poo. I smelled something. All right. So... But why do I say to wash it? And why do I say to dry it? Because if you're big chested like I am, it stretches out and it fits different. And I didn't do it for a while as often as I should have. And then I noticed, actually I think Holly noticed first. Every time I washed and dried, completely changed how it fit. So like, duh. It's like a pair of jeans. Once you wash them and dry them and then you gotta work them, work them out again. But these you don't want them to, I personally don't want it to be loose and not fitting and so 
as often as I can within reason. Um, I try to average with the sweaty one no more than three times to the gym. And then with this one, I might wear it if, like if I'm just going out, if I'm just, I just went to a job interview. I wore it for about three hours, I think, and then came home, took it off. Um, five times or so. Like if we're doing laundry, then I'll throw it in. Cause I was like, oh, I've worn it. But if I know that I haven't worn it, like I keep it folded up in the same spot. I was like, oh, I haven't worn it yet. I won't wash it. So there you go. So I just wash it after I've worn it a few times and then it starts to get stretched out. And so to keep its shape and to keep it tight. That's why you want to do that. And plus it's nasty. Even for breezing this thing, I still, especially now I'm on testosterone. Yep. And if you're on testosterone or not, you will probably get more body acne in the areas whether you're working out in one or not because your sweat's gonna stitch. It's, it's almost like wearing saran wrap in a way. It is, and underneath your breast tissue is disgusting. It's the worst part, but summer sucks in a binder, period. It's so, it's so bad. But summer sucks without a binder. I hate the summer without a binder. Once I got this um, over the summer two years ago, I had one of the best summers mentally. I felt so much better. <laughs> I really, really, really did. So binders are needed. Binders are wanted. It's why it's a hot commodity. It's one of the first things guys do other than possibly packing in some way. So yes, bind if you can, bind safely. And um, any other questions or comments or concerns, I will always answer about them. Um, I will have links up to two companies, Underworks and GC2B. We'll see if I'm wrong. Um, to where you can purchase a binder. Um, there are places that you can buy trans products that donate binders um, to other people. There um, are companies like 0.5 CC not sponsored video i i'm not an aiden how i am not an aiden hater <laughs> um point of pride does um a scholarship program to get people top surgery you can donate more money and a proceed from every single sale goes to it um it's a it's a route that i'm considering taking myself to get a scholarship to get top surgery so there's ways to find things google and ask questions to, to other people so that's it for the day. It's been a long video. I wanted to go over this a little bit more extensively because it's a serious topic. It's a serious way to possibly hurt yourself. Um, I've done it. And um, my biggest question from binding over 20 years is what I do and what I wouldn't do anymore. And has it changed my breast tissue? And since wearing binders properly, it has. My breast tissue has changed. And that's okay because... I guess because I'm going to remove it, but it does make them sit flatter and they sit further down. And so that kind of makes me uncomfortable. But for the most part, now that I have two binders, I'm not un unbinded. I'm not without a binder when I go out. So it's not as big an issue. Um, honestly, now at home, especially since I'm on testosterone and I'm just here with Holly, when I come home and take off a binder, I don't put on a sports bra until I have to take the dog out. And there were times over the winter where I kept my bra off and just put on a sweatshirt to walk the dog around the neighborhood. And then I found out someone was like, oh, I saw you walking your dog. And I'm like, okay, I quit doing that. So anything else I have, I lost it. <laughs> it's been a long video and I appreciate anybody that stuck around this long. Um, sorry for the cat incident. He took my pen. Good thing I didn't need it. But once again, anything else, please ask. Please share, please subscribe, and I will be having a packing video soon. I got some products um, for myself. Um, once again, everything I have, I've spent my own money on, unless it's been donated to me because I won a contest um, or given to me as a hand me down. But I have some stuff coming in the mail. Um, I have some new products and new ways of packing to try because I do wear a packer. And so we're going to be talking about Jax's packer. What? You guys have a great day. Thanks for sticking around. I guess I'm just going to let this go to 30 minutes. That's 30 minutes. Yeah. I got a long way to go. Thanks, everybody.